So hello and welcome, my name's Fiona and today we are going to make a little taffeta party dress. Um, this is for, um, well, she's, it's going to be her first birthday actually, um, but she's tiny, she's like a little doll. So you could make this for a friend's baby, your baby, or you could make it for a doll. Now, I'm using a shop bought thing for a pattern. I will put the pattern up on Facebook, so if you want to just use that, you can do. Um, yeah, it's stretchy material, so we would be careful when we're cutting a pattern out of that sort of thing. Lovely taffeta material. I've gone for proper taffeta. I've got a um, royal blue thread going one way and a black thread going the other. So I've matched that up with the royal blue, but you're never going to get it right, so just accept it. A bit of paper just for the pattern. It's quite a simple pattern as you can see, just a rectangle and then a bodice and this is all double sewn so we'll go over that. There's facing seams as well if um, if you need help with those. Got buttons. Um, we need a machine that can sew buttonholes. So we've got one of those buttonhole st stitches. We need a looper as well just to do this nice seam at the bottom. It's just so much lighter for this sort of fabric. We need some little scissors and we need some big scissors. Now I've hand sewn the buttons in because I don't think you can sew these buttons in with a, a machine. I'll use this one. Um, so a needle and thread. Um, I hope you enjoy watching it. It's been great fun to do. And um, yes, enjoy. Welcome. So we've got everything we need and uh, let's get started. Now I'm going to put these buttons safe because I don't want to lose them and I'm going to put my scissors safe because I always hide them from myself. So I'm using a big motorbike going past, I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going to use a, a like baby grow as a pattern but do remember that this is quite stretchy fabric so whereas the taffeta will have no give at all. So quite simple, all I really need to know is how wide it is and then it is literally the basic pattern shapes that we would do for ourselves. Obviously babies heads are a bit bigger, um, well a bit bigger in proportion to the rest of the body. So I've done a quick sketch around there, now I basically need that for a fold over and then I need a seam allowance around the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is match it up as well because if I want it to be equal. So I can get rid of that. can get rid of that side you see so it's quite simple in fact I don't think that that bit of material will be worth saving so what I'll probably do is cut it in four and then for the ruffle at the bottom I just need to cut out a rectangle so it's at least probably three and I'll do it all in one strip. Yeah, it's just, you know, as few seams as possible because as she, you know, she might want to take a nap in the day and I want her to be comfortable. Lovely. So I know I've cut this by eye. Um, what I would do is I would check it and lay it out straight. So then, there we go. Always the last little bit. So, easy enough. Now what I need 
is four of these because I'm lining it with the same material. It might be best if I just use this end. So what I've got now is four suits of taffeta and I'm just folding that over. The reason I'm doing this is I find the best way to cut taffeta is not to pin it. Um, let me get a, a scraggly bit so I can just show you. If I put a pin in this to hold the pattern through, I would have broken threads and you will always be able to see the pinholes. Um, so I, you know, as minimal contact with the cloth as possible is best with taffeta. So, best way to do it is weight it and then cut round, I find. Um, obviously, you can make a pattern that you can then cut so you can pin on the outside but um, because I've got like four folds here I um, it's it's taken away the slipperiness it's because um, that's the problem that the, the fabric will slip against each other each, each other bit and then make it a bit harder. just grab this bit I can show you what I mean by make a pattern that you draw on that you then cut round. Okay. Uh, got rid of that, got rid of that. So the pattern I want out of this huge piece of cloth is this. Desperately need one of those. So what I would do if I wanted to pin it is I would pin it with the pattern paper still uncut so I could pin the excess to hold it still and then cut round my, my little bit, you see? So that I haven't damaged the piece that I need uh, but I've got an exact copy of what I was hoping for. So I hope that makes sense to you. Um, it probably doesn't, because <laughs> I'm not sure I'm explaining myself very well. So now that I've got this, and I've got it in a manageable size, I can um, just check that I've done it well. Now taffeta is the easiest of the silks to, to sew with, so it's a good starting point. Um, I'll show you what I mean by jumping whilst it's sewing. There's a lot of sewing machines that don't seem to handle it uh, very well. I would say that you need an, a really sharp needle. Um, you know, I, I would give myself a new needle if I was going to sew it, because of, that just makes life easier. <coughs> Now I was thinking about this the other day and it is where do you start? Now if it doesn't say on a pattern or you're writing your own pattern then I usually start with the bottom and then I do the bottom bits and then I do the top bits then I sew them all together and then I finish the garment. It just works for me because there's no logical reason at all. 
Now all I'm going to do here is a running stitch and I'm doing it as close to the edge as I feel comfortable with and I'm doing it in a loose running stitch. Lovely. I'm not going to finish it, I'm not going to do any reverse stitches because I want it to gather. And um, this is why you've got to be careful when you're sewing taffeta, is because it literally, it puckers anyway. Uh, I'm going to gather it slightly more than that, but um, such is life. So I'll get that done. Now I've got my bodice pieces. And like I said, I need to get rid of one corner. Because I only need buttons on one side. Now I'm putting the buttons on the top corner because uh, comfort. Um, no other reason than that. Um, if she wants to take a nap, then if the buttons are on the side, then she's more than able to. Lovely. Now what I'm doing is I've got two pieces of taffeta here. I'm going to sew the top seam first so that I can do a facing seam. And then I'm going to sew the arm, slit, the arm holes. So this is just two bits of fabric. There's no right and no wrong side for this. I'm going to have to pull that through because I don't want it puckering, I don't want it naturally gathering. And I hold the thread when I pull it out as well. Now to do a facing seam, um, turn it the right way around, pick a side because you're going to just do the opposite side on the other side and then you're sewing as close as you can to the stitches. Lovely. So two bits of fabric sewn together, then opened out and this row of seam is literally as close to the edge as possible. I'm really sorry I can't do it in a different colour thread so you can see better, um, but this isn't for me, you see, because <laughs> it wouldn't fit. Now just looking at it, this armhole looks very small so I'm just going to trim it. I don't know how I managed to do that. Probably more sewing and less talking would be a good idea. So now all I'm going to do is sew these two bits of tapping together. Around the arm. Lovely. So same again with this one. Going to do the neckline at the top, open it out and then do the facing seam.
Now, if you were doing a, a fabric without any give, what you'd have to do is cut down so you've got like little teeth. Um, this is going to be fine though, so I'm not going to bother. And because taffeta is a bit, well, it's quite fray-y, then um, I just think that I've weakened the actual structure. So again with the face and seam. Now what I'm doing is I'm pulling it apart so I can get as close to the previous stitches as possible. gone a bit too close there actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another row of sti si stitches um, just because I think with a little bit of wear this will easily pull out but it's best if you see yourself making a mistake to rectify it as straight as soon as possible um, I'll just show you what I did so when I was sewing, this row of seams looks to me like um, with a bit of wear and tear it will actually pop out there. So I've just done another arc round. Alright, last arm. bodices I don't know probably if you'd refer to any children's clothes as bodices but I'm going to call them that Just trim that so now what I need to do is I need to attach them here but what I wanted to double check before I do that is that my facing seams are both on the outside edge there so it'll be that way so at this point, the, both my facing seams are on the same size. So, yeah, because I'm going to turn it around again. So I'm going to leave the longer button side open, and I'm going to open these out and stitch these together. So I've got the inside layer here. And as close as I can to the arm sleeve and I'm just going to run a, slip, a, a seam through. Check that I've got both bits of material. Now I suppose in a way this is quite fiddly but it's because it's, it's quite a small thing. Um, lovely. So now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to sew these ones. I'm going to pop the seams as much as I can to keep them just pushing the, the thread out. when you're cutting satins or uh, when you're sewing them is that you can literally push the needle the, the fabric into the machine so let's have a little look and see if I've done that right 
because I think I've done it wrong. Yeah, because I've got my seams there, so. That's great. And then what I'm going to do is when I've got the skirt on there, I'm just going to tuck everything in and sew these up at the top, but so I can, um, so I can turn it all round. So lovely. That's the bodice done. What I'm going to do is just gather this up and make sure I'm quite happy with it because there's a bit more there than there is there. All right, I'm going to switch you off for a minute just so I can get ready for the next stage. So, just taking a minute just to get my gathers all gathered. Um, so we've got the bodice here. Now we're still wrong side out and what we're going to do is literally put the skirt inside the body and then sew it all up. Um, yeah, okay, I think it would be tricky to do the top, the bottom and the middle at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it to the bottom and then I'm going to sew the top to it. <coughs> I'm just going to grab a sip of water, I should have done that off camera. So, so it's um, a really good thing to use the machine as a third hand, um, which is fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the stitches below the gathering stitches. This is just to make the final seam as light as possible. So yeah, just before we switched off, I was saying, you know, the worst thing that can happen is the, the fabric gets tucked into the machine. Uh, as soon as that happens, you literally have to switch the machine off and you have to pick out all the fabric. Um, you know, with most fabrics, it's the needles that go first and it's the easiest to replace bit of the machine to go. But that is one of the worst things you can have. to do it under the original gather seam is because when I sew the top on I'm going to sew over the gather seam so that I know all my seams are also in because I don't want any of them showing through in the finished garment. Just checking my seam and then stuff it in. I know it seems weird. And now I'm going to sew the other half of the bodice, but I'm going to make sure that I sew over both those lines of seams. And what I'm going to do is use the foot as a third hand and accept that I'm not going to get this all in to stay in. I'm only going to get a few inches in at a time. So let's get this going. Thank you. 
are, so that's the last bit done. Now I could trim that if I wanted to, because uh, the reason that we're doing it inside the whole garment is because this would be quite scratchy and irritate her skin. So there's my bottom seam and then my top seam and then on this side there's just my top seam. So what I need to do now is cross my fingers and hope that I've got this all the right way around because it's a simple matter of turning it inside out. Without actually damaging the hole that you're pulling all the cloth through. So. so it's looking positive. There we go. Always comes out with a big flourish, doesn't it? So now what we've got is the bodice and the sleevey poos, the sleevey holes, and then the top here. And I've got one side of the arms a lot higher so that I've got my loads to work with when I'm doing my buttons and my buttonholes. And I've got these facing seams opposite. There we go. <laughs> yes, bear with me. <laughs> so... <coughs> I need my facing seams on the inside, the inside of the cloth. Um, this just makes this bit not sort of flop out. Um, there we go. Make sure it's as tidy as possible. Lovely. So all I have to do now is from the right side sew down this in a long sleeve seam, which I'm going to use as French seams just because it makes sense to me. I'm going to make sure that I've got the, um, the skirt bodice lined up. And what I'm probably going to do is sew it and then trim it. There we go. Just unhappy over the seams. Now what I want to do is reverse this seam, so I'm going to leave the machine in the leave the fabric in the machine, and then just pull, pull these seams, um, just so that it's done. Then a couple of reverse stitches, and then hold the thread while I pull it away. So this time this, the seam doesn't give a natural gather. <sighs> Now all I'm doing is, I could actually use some smaller scissors, I could use some like pinches. I'm just cutting this seam as close to the stitches as I feel comfortable, so that when I fold it over it won't be too big. Especially over the bodice, because we've got quite a lot of folds there now. Even though I started off with thin fabric. Lovely. So... Inside out again. I love taffeta. 
And then it's just a, literally a straight stitch on this side of the seam. Woohoo! just literally going over the seam so I could probably work it out but I'm going to go it was eight layers of fabric. Pinching those seams, pushing those um, thread out the way, and it's definitely looking dress shaped, isn't it? So back the right way round. Now I could do a French seam here. I think I will actually, or, or I could try and push it in and then just do a single seam, but I think I'll just do another French seam. So the garment's the right way round. Lovely. <laughs> Yes, so while I was trimming I noticed that I didn't actually catch the back stitches, which is fine, best time to catch that sort of thing. So I'm just going to go over there and make sure it's nice and secure. Because although she won't be wearing this daily, I don't think, you know, she, we do want it to survive the, the actual event. Lovely, just turn the seam around the wrong way, pinching it through with my pit fingers. Lovely, couple reverse stitches. There we go. So we've got the bottom seam to do, the bottom hem, and now we have to do the buttons and the button holes. Now I think. I don't know if there's a correct way. Um, if you put the buttonholes at the front, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, there probably is a correct way to do this, but it's not jumping to mind. It's not like men have the buttons on the left or something. Anyway, what I need to do is finish this off. And I'm literally going to keep the buttonholes quite long. So. And I've given myself enough space to do it. And this is just the seam for the buttonholes. So there we go. And I can push this seam in, push this bottom seam in with my fingers. And So now what I'm going to do is just roll it and then roll it over again because I tried to sort of do it invisibly but it wasn't going to happen. So a couple of running stitches.
Lovely. Now, the button side as well we need to get done. So, lovely. Uh, we're going to stitch the buttonholes there. I think we can probably use two buttonholes. Um, I'm going to need that later as well. So that's me up today. Um, okay, well, while we've been switched off, what I've done is I've sewn two buttons on. I've done them with hand sew, so I don't do, even try to do it with a machine with funky buttons. And I've trimmed the bottom so that I can hem it because before I had the actual finishing seam on the cloth. Now. I did that on purpose because otherwise I'd just have to trim it anyway because taffeta's such a monstrous thing. I've got the sewing machine that can do button holes and a button so that I can measure it. Okay, well let's start with the hemming at the bottom. So I've got my little hemi foot. I need to turn the dress inside out again. There we go. And to change the foot is literally a kick at the back. I'm going to put the foot in the right sort of position and I'm going to lower that just to wiggle it because I'm not very good at changing feet. Now let's get rid of all this thread. I'm going to do a couple of stitches on the flap and then I'm going to turn it all up. So it's going to take a while to catch and I'm going to pull it through from behind. I'll try and do it the other way around. So what I'm doing is lifting this up so it catches and it sort of curls it round and then I'm making sure that the fabric is moving by tugging it at the back Lovely, and now it's really important that you have a nice crisp edge for this because of You've got to give your machine a fighting chance, you know. <laughs> yes, I'll do it the other way around so you can see. <laughs> and then the fabric will curl up so you can't see. stretch as it were. Um, whilst I'm doing this I just want to take a moment to say about the choice of thread you use when you do taffeta. Taffeta always has um, two colours. Um, so on this it's a royal blue uh, going left to right and black going 
right uh, up and down. Now I'm just coming over the seam. We have two choices. We can either ignore it and do that little bit by hand, which I think is probably the best. Um, or we can just try and force the machine to do it. Um, I think by hand is probably your best bet, but I am going to line that up. I don't know if you can see, but it's already fraying quite monstrously. So here we go, bang, 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 over the seam. And there we are. Give it a good tug so that we know that it's moving. Lovely, take that out. I might do a close up of the foot that I'm using and um, show you the, the end result, although I'm not showing you the seam because <laughs> this is monstrous. <laughs> Lovely. So, a looper foot. I love these, I think they're so clever. And then the seam is just round there, and you can see that it's puckered a little bit, but it's actually quite tidy. So that's that done, Get the dress around the right way round again and we're going to sew the buttons holes from the right side. Lovely, keep my feet, my feet is safe. Now this button is quite funky and, um, and um, the holes are, are kind of a bit difficult to see. So I'm going to need quite a big hole. Lovely, so that's about there. Now, to measure your foot, uh, to measure your hole before you um, sew, it is the size of the button plus the height of the button plus a fifth of an inch. So, I don't know, I could get a ruler out, but. Um, I think what I'm going to do is do these diagonally. Um, just because it's going to be quite big. Now the buttonhole stitch on here happy. So what I've done is I've turned the machine on to the 4 and 2 section and this just doesn't end for me and I'm going to do that three or four times. Obviously my fingers are so crossed that I don't, I don't run out of thread. Then I'm going to go up the side And then I'm going to go back to two and then do the top. And then I'm going to go back to three. To go down. straight and I'm going to go up again because it didn't do it very clearly. I've got loads more threads to trip. <laughs> How I love those. And then I'm going to do another one just parallel to it. There we go. So do the end. I should turn that down. 
and then I'm going to go up towards me. And then I'm going to do the end. And then I'm going to go back again. needs trimming and the actual eye holes need cutting. Uh. Yes, sorry I don't want to stop the camera and then go oh <laughs> It's like magic, I've done it. <laughs> but um, there's so many threads here that I can't even see it. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab a couple of pins. Now what you need is um, a stitch de-picker and um, obviously I've got one of those to hand, yes this is completely me. So what I've done is I've pinned the ends of the buttonhole and I'm just going to nick the fabric and trim it in between those rows of stitches. So, and it's like magic. I just drop it. <laughs> there we go. And then round the other side. Now I, I really feel that you should take your time in this. This is like the final step and it would be so, ra so really bad if you ruined the dress at this point. What I'm going to do is check that the, the buttonhole is large enough. Because it could do with being a bit bigger. So that one's fine. I'm going to put my scissors in again. Uh, sorry, I'm going to put my pins in again. So yeah, what do you think we should call this video? If you're in a faffing around with pins, <laughs> she's not very good with pins. <laughs> Lovely. I'll come a bit closer again. And then we're going to check to see that the buttonhole is large enough because you want it to be able to easily go in but you don't want it so loose that they fall out again. So it is just a matter of sort of judging it. So there we are. 
my lovely little taffeta dress for my little friend. Um, I think it would make a great doll's dress as well. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching it. And um, I hope to see you again with another project. Thank you.